Friends Podcast. Okay, we are on a row, and here it is. It's what, June the 24th? And this yep. is episode two of the Artist Friends Podcast. <laughs> We're a little light tonight. Uh, Constance was under the weather, so she couldn't make us. But I'm here with Diane. Diane, say hello to everybody. Hi, everybody. It's <laughs> Diane Hunt from <laughs> Diane Hunt Studio. And we're this will probably be a little bit shorter pro- podcast than the last one. We're trying to keep them kind of short here. We don't want to, you know, bore you folks too much. Um, the recommended videos was uh, a short video of a, an artist, uh, and I forgot to write his name down. <laughs> An older, older artist that he started out as uh, being a uh, kind of a pulp magazine illustrator. And Everett, I can tell you his name, Everett Raymond Kinsler. K I N S T L E R. Yes, 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 that, that was a fellow. And what impressed me was uh, the first part of the video, he talked about who he'd studied with. And he had stayed with one of my all-time favorite artists, James Montgomery Flagg, who is famous for doing the you know, Uncle Sam One Shoe posters and a lot of World, World War One posters. And when I started uh, doing my pulp radio art illustrations, I've had several comments. In fact, if you remember Diana, Paul Mishy, who used to be you know joining us frequently, who was who was actually had a career as an illustrator right away said, pointed out that my style was similar to James Montgomery Flagg, which pleased me to no end because he's one of my favorite artists. I don't try to talk <laughs> him, but I could, you could tell that his art. It's always nice when you're compared to somebody you admire. <laughs> yes. I, I'm, I don't know if you remember that night when he said that, I was lit up. I thought, oh, boy, yeah, that's the greatest compliment ever, you know. <laughs> so this gentleman, what impressed me with the, in his career, how he talked about who he studied with, he said it was some of the uh, best American uh, illustrators around at the time from the early, you know, early to late 20th century artists. And uh, he's, his career uh, has gone full circle. He's advanced into doing portraits. And, of course, he's done several of the presidents and other famous people, Hollywood personalities. But he still retained his style, his illustrator style. He, he emphasized, you know, he stayed true to his heart as an artist. He didn't really try to uh, do something that the market necessarily uh, wanted. You know, I, it resonated with, you know, with, and then Roy Lichtenstein was the other video. His artwork was okay. But what I admired about him, uh, the documentaries that I've seen uh, is his lifestyle. Had you met him on the street, you wouldn't know he was an artist. But when you look at his art, you know, he basically was in that pop art generation. He, him and Andy Warhol started the American pop art movement. They, and it wasn't his intention to start it, but he did and is credited with that. You would, when you see Andy Warhol, how he was, you know, always all made up and kind of weird, you know, out there. But Roy Lichtenstein, his normal middle, middle-class American, raised his family, and he created his art for his kids, you know, and I identify with that. You can be normal. You can be, <laughs> I guess, of course, it's hard to define what's normal nowadays, but, you know, you don't have to be way out there and uh, still uh, still be an artist. Yeah, so what do you think about that, Diane? Uh, I, I was interested. I, I didn't know Everett Raymond Kinsler. I'm not that familiar with illustrators, I guess other than uh, Norman Rockwell, maybe. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's interesting. There, even today, there's a lot of people that come from illustration into fine art later in their careers. You know, they retire from doing illustration work, and they move over to the fine art side. So it's it's interesting, even, you know, knowing back then that that was happening. 
but it's it's good to see people follow, you know, just doing their own thing and having their careers develop in front of them, you know, without trying to follow the trends or whatever was going on at the time. I mean, even Roy Lichtenstein, they, him and that other guy, um, they were doing the same thing at the same time. They didn't know each other. And then <laughs> that was that was kind of weird that they were both doing cartoon-like paintings exactly. independent of one another. And not, that's kind of weird that that happened at the same time. And it's like, it's like one of the curators in the, in the video, uh, they developed a trend without even knowing it. You know? Yeah. They, well, you look, you don't know it at the time. And it's like when you look back and you're like, oh, huh, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, it wasn't planned. You know, it's just, it's just the way it happened. It, it, it's like you said, you know, they, they, didn't fo they didn't try to uh, follow a trend. They just did what they they created the work that was their passion in their heart. You know, I think that's a good message for especially the younger artists. Any young artist that might be listening to you know, this podcast, stay true to your heart. Don't worry about trying to uh, be hip, uh, you know, and catch a trend. Because well, it's you have to be careful because you look at, you know, you go on Instagram and you go on, you know, different artists. There's so much available now to see other artists working and how they're doing things and, you can get kind of sidetracked by looking at other people too much. I find that I try not to do that too much so that I don't like, I'm not comparing my work to theirs and um, getting hung up on that. If I look at stuff too much, it, it get, I get, I start getting, um, uh, too, it's like too much information is coming in to my system and I can't shut yeah. it off. Like I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> yeah, I can't process it. I need to, not see that stuff all the time so that I can do my stuff without that interference. Exactly. And it's like, uh, I heard, I don't remember which of the uh, coaches or mentors, you know, that I follow, uh, had mentioned this, not spending that much time on Instagram or on Instagram or Facebook. But if you do look, don't compare, obviously, because you get depressed. It will make you <laughs> depressed. Plus, don't pay attention to, you know, some people, they announce, oh, I sold this work today. Oh, I sold that work today. Really? But it's good to look to see uh, the different styles. And that's, that's when I spend time on Instagram and Facebook. That is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at their style. How do they create that piece? That in itself is, is influencing me in a sense, because, and it's been educational because it has helped me. It's, okay, that's how they created that piece. All right, then let me try that. And especially if I'm working, trying to improve my craft and working toward a particular method, it's very helpful without having to enroll in an artist training course somewhere. At the point where yeah, I mean, there's a lot of helpful stuff online with YouTube and even on Instagram, the past videos everybody's posting now. I mean, it is helpful to see stuff when you're trying to figure things out, but you don't want to necessarily copy what people are doing and, and, bringing that too much into your own vision of what you're doing because otherwise you just turn, you're just a copycat. You're not doing yeah. your own, your own thing. Exactly. But then on the other hand, traditional art school, what do they have you do? They have you copy the masters, don't they? Of course, not in the very beginning when you're young and you're starting out, that's a good thing because you need to learn how, how to, to do some good figure painting or some good figure drawing or to get you to learn your values and your shades and everything. But don't, don't get too wrapped up with that, you know, for on a long-term basis, because I think it will lead you down the proverbial uh, rat hole, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that, which I wanted to bring up, Constance got me to think about this, you know, in our last, last week's discussion, at the end, you know, Constance said, what uh, platforms are, you know, the best, whatever. And, of course, and I mentioned some of them that I'm on. Followed up with that with some comments on one of the Facebook groups that I participate in were the same kind of question. But the question was phrased with, what platforms are you selling your art on? Mm -hmm. Now, I want to I want to change the focus. Of, you know, we've, in the past, Diane, you know, we've been talking, you know, talking about, and for our listeners, I'm going to, this is going to be a repeat for Diane because she's heard me preach this before, but this is for our listeners. The main purpose you could, should keep in your mind 
all these platforms, Fine Art America, Art Pal, Society6, Redbubble, Zazzle, just to name a few, that you put your art on, it's to show your art to the world, to get your, because all these platforms are extensively marketed throughout the internet. So your art will get marketed without you really have, needing to do a whole lot by its nature. Increase viewers. If you sell something, fine. That's, that's nice. That's rewarding. But that should not be your main focus. What you want in these platforms to use is visibility. Let me explain why. Three things you should have in your mind as a basic goal. The first goal is to improve your ranking through Google searches. You should eventually, with your website and with your name, if someone types in your name into Google, you should come up four or five, maybe six pages deep of all the different places. If you don't come up at all, this is how you can do that. This is how you can increase increase that. It's called attention. We talk about a lot of Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, video. That's what he talks about. Yeah, attention, attention. Number two, eventually to have your name associated with a particular either style or service or subject. So if somebody types in landscape painter, your name will come up amongst all the others. Or like in the case of I've been able to achieve it with pulp radio art, my sites come up. You want people to be able to find you without necessarily needing to know your name. Three, with the advent of the Amazon Echo and Google Home, is rapidly advancing through voice-activated searches. So if someone says, Alexa, show me landscape painter. You want your work, your website, your name to come up as one of the searches. My goal eventually is if someone says, show me visual artists, or they type in visual artists, I come up in the mix. I haven't achieved that yet, but eventually it will, if I, if you continue, a lot of stuff that we are in our podcast here, we talk about internet marketing and what I refer to as internet marketing, not like what a lot of mentors say so much as to concentrate on getting your work sold. You have to let people know who you are before you can sell anything. And that's what this is all about. They have to be able to find you. And this is how you do over the process, the email marketing, the blogs and newsletters, this podcast distributed with your name, you know, is a, Another form, it's just think of it as a drip of water in a bucket. It's just one more drip. Eventually, it's going to it's gonna overflow. It's going to come up to the top. So when I think of these platforms, these are how I've gotten started putting my art up on all these platforms. I'm, up, I'm on about seven different platforms. Over 100,000 people have seen my art. Had I gone the traditional route where all artists do, all your coaches recommend, to go and establish a relationship with a gallery and, and get involved in a show. Maybe 100 people, maybe 200 people would have seen my art. Maybe somebody would have bought something. It would have only been in that area, in that region. As it is, over 100,000 people have seen my art, and they're all over the world. That's the power of the Internet. There's discussions, pros and cons, galleries shutting down. It's going to happen, folks. You can't stop it. Eventually, there may be some, there may be some uh, government legislation that tries to slow things down a little bit, but it's not going to stop it. This is the evolution, so why not get on board the curve? Why not take advantage of it now? State your claim now. There's not one way to do it, multiple methods. <laughs> right, Diane? <laughs> yes, it takes a lot of work. It takes work and takes time, but... At least it's there. I mean, back years ago, before the Internet happened, you used to have to manually take, you know, film pictures of your paintings, hope to, hope to God that they would come out when you got the film developed. There was no way of manipulating, except you had to, you know, really line up your camera with, your, with the size of the picture and everything to get them to come out right. And or pay a professional photographer yeah, an ungodly amount of money. Have, right, and have all that expense of developing the film and getting slides made and shipping them to different galleries and or taking them in person and carting your portfolio around to galleries in person. <laughs> I mean, it was, you know, it was so slow because you only had so many time, days, you know, hours in a day, and 
and money in your pocket because I mean it wasn't cheap to get slides made and to, to mail them out and everything and a lot of times you didn't get them back so you'd have that expense just going out nothing in return a lot of times so and it would take forever because <laughs> you, you know you'd send the stuff off and you didn't know if they got it didn't know when they got it if they got it if anybody looked at it you know it's like and a lot of times you didn't get any response, so you don't didn't know whatever happened to it to the stuff. I um, mean, you had to phone, make phone calls, which you had to pay for long distance calls if you were calling anywhere outside your area. It was it was really time consuming and expensive. So having the internet now is, I mean, it is it is still time consuming to put all this stuff up and to work on it, but um, it's so much cheaper than it used to be. And exactly. And you're reaching out such a big audience. I mean, like you said, worldwide. I mean, you couldn't have done that years ago. No, there's no way. I mean, you know, 25, 30 years ago, forget it. So I think it's just, it's a fantastic time for artists. But I still, I knock my head against the wall. How so many artists, somewhat established artists, they're nowhere to be found on the Internet. You know, and they're going to disappear. It's a fact. You may have won several awards. You may be listed, have your work in galleries. You may have your work in the Guggenheim, in the you know New York City Museum, whatever. But 20 years from now, are people going to know who you are? Probably not, unless you reach superstar star status, and only 1% of 1% ever do that. Well, um, wh whoever they are, there's just a handful of people like that. I mean, it's kind of yeah. like, you know, yeah, so they may, you know, maybe 50 years or 100 years from people may remember, you know, them because, you know, they're continuous star power. But I'm sorry. The other but folks, other, everybody else can still make a living. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to make millions. <laughs> if we plant our flag on the Internet and we get ourselves widely known through the Internet, you will stay. You will be there forever because it is a fact. And I always advise people who are new to the Internet, I always tell them, I said, be careful what you type and what you say on the Internet because it will be there forever and ever and ever. Be kind philosophy is the best because, believe me, it's going to be there forever. And 15 years from now, you may be applying for a job or you may be trying to get in this show. Or How come you said this back then? <laughs> you're, going to have to, you're going to have to explain your comments, explain yourself. So it's yeah, always, it come back to bite you. <laughs> will. So, and that's that's the that's the nature, you know, of the internet. Because you know, computers they 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 record these logs. They have these logs, and they're you know on their files forever and ever. That's the negative side. You can't hide. One way of looking at it, like you said, Diane, it's a lot of work. You just you've got to put the hours in. And the important thing is that you know we only have so many hours of a day. Maximize the amount of time you you do have to your best advantage. And the beauty of it is it's free. It doesn't cost you any money except time, right? <laughs> okay, we're about ready to to close up here. Like I said, this is going to be a little bit shorter. I'm tired of preaching. You know, I've been Diana. She's smiling because she's heard me heard me preach. And uh, her and Constance, they're they turned in. I've converted believers. I hope other listeners uh, will become believers. It's an open invitation, folks. If you're a working artist, you have an exhibition coming up or a show you would like to announce to the world, come on. We meet every Monday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, you know, Chicago. That's U.S. time. And uh, we usually only meet for about an hour. Then we just started to record because we've been meeting for so long. Diane and I were just talking before mm -hmm. I started recording it. I myself, I have to be careful when I listen to the last audio. I don't complete my sentences because I pick up on the body language. And we're, we, we've gotten to know each other so well, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. <laughs> Especially since we've never met in person. But I feel yeah. like I know you. Just no, like I've never met that. physically. But, hey, we've uh, you know, met online, you know, so for the last three years. It, 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 it's been incredible, you know, and uh, – they keep, I think they have sympathy for me. They keep coming back and don't want me to be here all alone. You know? <laughs> I hope we can share this with uh, our listeners and consider joining us and become inspired too and learn something, learn a little bit. You know, we're not all here. You know, it doesn't even cost to use the Zoom service. You know, it's a Zoom video service that I use. I bear that cost to keep the room active. Don't be shy. Come, come and join us. I want to start a new feature. 
tip of the week. This is completely by complete surprise, Diane. What? <laughs> and I'm going to let Diane do. What is your tip of the week? It could be marketing. It could be craft related. <laughs> you caught me off guard, Ken. Let me think. <laughs> um, That's well, I think fun. I think we already talked about a good tip of the week. Is not is is being true to yourself and not trying to emulate other people you see and because you you don't know the. So the biggest thing is you don't know if they're just starting out, if they're in the middle, or if they're near the end <laughs> of their career, and you can't compare yourself to them. There's no way. It might be in a totally different spot. That's a good one. Be true to yourself. Create art that you like, that you enjoy creating. It will, And when you do that, it will come through, and you will, if you put it out there on the Internet, it will capture the eye of somebody, and they will buy it. It's guaranteed to give you some hard-earned money for your baby, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to close now. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Please, open invitation, come and join us every Monday at 7 p.m. And keep an eye on Facebook. I usually post a notice on Facebook. Have some fun. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, Diane. Bye. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.